The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, August 5th, 2025, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at arborresearch.com or biancoresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everyone to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish with Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Welcome, Jim. Thanks for having me. Today, Jim discusses the correlation between weak payrolls and declining population growth. Jim, you've argued that slowing payrolls and massive revisions might have more to do with collapsing population growth than a slowing economy as the borders closed. To start us off today, what is the jobs break-even rate? So we go to the first slide. The jobs break-even rate is in blue. Now, what that is, is an estimate by economists as to how many jobs do we need to create in order to meet population growth and new entrants into the economy. Until recently, most people were kind of settled in that eh, we don't have to bother with that. It's around 80 or 100,000 jobs a month. And you could see in this chart, for most of, you know, until about 2016, that was the case. Then it started to decline into 2020 and almost hit zero with the pandemic. Then it surged, I'm talking about the blue line, and then it's backed off. Now, the orange line on the chart is the annualized population growth, and this is by the official statistics by the um, Census Bureau. And we'll get into it a little bit later why they might be off. But you can see that if you take the official statistics, the population growth and the jobs needed closely track each other. Now, keep in mind that when we're talking about payrolls and unemployment, these are measures of the population of the United States. There's 163 million people that have jobs between the ages of uh, 18 and 64. Um, what's gonna be the big driver of whether or not that number goes up or down? Well, how fast is the population of the whole country growing at? Or specifically, how fast is the population of 18 to 64 year olds growing? So this is kind of an overlooked issue with the payroll report and it shouldn't be. So if we go to the next chart, um, this comes from some data that uh, I pulled together from a report done last month by the American Enterprise Institute, and it shows three lines. The blue line is the actual yearly number of jobs that we've created on the average for the year. Uh, the, the green line was the revised estimate for 2024, for 2020 to 2024, given the surge of immigrants. The black line is what the estimate was for the break-even rate going back pre-pandemic. You see, it was pretty stable. That's why I was trying to argue with on the previous chart. It was previous. It was pretty stable. And then the red line, and that's the one I want to focus on, is the forecast under the low immigration starting in 2025. So, if immigration is going to slow, then the break-even rate on jobs could go as low by 2028 as 10,000 jobs a month that that's all we need. And in some measures, it's actually negative. So if you actually produce anything above zero, it's enough jobs. This is really alien for people to get their head around because they they think 100, 150,000 is a good number. They freaked out over the numbers that we saw um, on Friday with the July payroll report and especially the revisions, which we'll get to in a second, that were very, very low because they're still basing it on that assumption of about 100, 150,000 jobs being something that we all try to strive for. Jim, what's going on with population growth? So if we look at the next chart, the next chart shows you a breakdown of population growth. How many people, you know, growth in the United States? And it breaks it in the black line shows you the growth numbers. And this is from the Congressional Budget Office. And it shows your projection for 2026. I might add that that projection in 2026 was done in January before Trump became president. And I'll talk about that in the next slide, but let me break it down here. What's important to note is there's, it's broken down two different ways. What is net immigration? Net immigration is total number of immigrants coming into the country, less those that are leaving. 
That's the red bars. The blue bars is births minus deaths. We know that the fertility rate is very low. And what you see is almost all the population growth is about immigration, especially since 2020. The blue bars are very small. The red bars are very large. You saw a surge of population as the border opened, and then you've seen it come down as they've slowed down with the border. So if we go to the next chart, the next chart comes from Customs and Border Patrol, CBP, and it shows the number of people on nationwide encounters at the border per month. And the black line is everywhere, and the southwest border is the red bars. And you can see that most of it is the southwest border. Uh, May of 2019, you might remember that's when all those um, that's when all of those children came in, the undocumented children without their parents. There was a big surge of that from Central America, but that was a one-time thing. But what you could see here is it follows the population growth. It surged from 2020 to December of 23, when 370,000 people came into the um, country in one month, and it really slowed down a lot in 2024. And then since Trump became president, it is really slowed down. So that gets to that estimate that I showed on the previous slide that January was a slowdown, but that was done in, I'm sorry, that 2026 was a slowdown, but that was done in January before we saw just how slow the population was going to get in, uh, in the country. Is it slowing faster than expected? Uh, it, it can be. So if we jump to the next chart, the next chart here, and I want to run through a series of charts. These are more anecdotes um, and then lead up to it. First of all, the Bank of Mexico um, does give a number on the Mexican remittance payments. So this is the amount of payments that are sent from the United States through the Bank of uh, Mexico into, the, into their country. So this would be um, undocumented and documented workers working in the United States, earning money and sending it back to their family. As highlighted on the chart, what's happened in the last few months is this number has declined quite a bit um, right now. The number of transactions, monthly change from a year ago, is 2 million lower than it was a year ago. So this would argue that the number of, of Mexican workers in the United States, both legal and illegal, are sending back a lot less money because there is the, presumably there isn't as many of them working. Maybe some of the undocumented ones are in hiding. Maybe they've, they've self-deported. Maybe they were arrested and actually deported, but it's down. If we go to the next chart, the next chart basically shows the two-month cumulative revision to the data. And what this is suggests, this is the payroll report that got everybody's um, all excited, but I showed as a percentage of jobs. So that 258,000 revision was minus 0.16% of jobs. In the last 43 years, going back to August of 82, there's only been one other time that we've seen a revision bigger than this one. And that was April 2020, when we had 20, 20 million jobs lost during that one month, because that was the month we shut down because of COVID. That's a special circumstance. We understand why the data could be highly skewed there. But June of 25, we saw it skewed. Now, I also highlighted October of 08, August 82, December 79, July, June of 75, August of 70, July 69, July 67. What's interesting about this is all of those other periods were recessions. Um, we're not in a recession now, and I don't believe we are in a recession. But really what it says is that when you see a giant revision to the data, something's changed. And usually that something's changed is, remember I usually say in these podcasts that a recession is the economy being murdered. Something happens, causes everybody to stop doing economic activity all at once, and the economy contracts. Usually that shows up in the payroll report because remember the way that they do this report is it's a survey. They don't get all the answers or all the respondents. So they estimate who the rest of the respondents will say. Then when something happens, they realize that their estimates are way off. And that's why you have these big downward revisions. Usually the something happens is a recession. Something causes the economy to contract and everybody stops hiring. 
This time around, the something that happened is shutting down the border. And that shutting down the border means that all of the assumptions they had on, well, all the missing respondents from our survey, well, we estimate that they'll come in at this pace. Well, what we're learning is maybe a lot of those people didn't respond, you know, hiring workers that, you know, come from other countries and realizing they're not here anymore or they're here, but they're in hiding and they're afraid to go to work because of ICE. And that's why we've seen such a dramatic change in the numbers. So what should be done about this? Well, that's a good question. If we jump to the next chart, um, this is from the survey of the Wall Street Journal about attitudes about handling of specific issues, Republicans and Democrats, net approval. So approve minus disapprove Republicans over Democrats in the middle you will see illegal immigration. And you'll see that that dark green bar is more than plus 20. That means that the public approves of the way that the Republicans are handling immigration, illegal immigration, by 20 points over the Democrats. The, this fatter, lighter green bar is Trump's approval rating. It's net positive, it's above zero. More people approve then disapprove of what Trump is doing on illegal immigration. Every other issue, they're looking at the fat green bars, Trump's net negative, except for illegal immigration. So if you jump to the next slide, the next slide is something that Trump actually tweeted out yesterday or put on Truth Social yesterday. Promises made, promises kept. Negative net immigration for the first time in 50 years meaning more people left the country than entered. Now, the, the rub on this is that there's no data that says we're quite at net negative. There's plenty of data. Maybe they, they've got some late July, early August data that hasn't been released that they're basing this on, uh, and eventually we'll find it out. But at a minimum, we know that there's been a dramatic change reducing the amount of immigration. Promises made, promises kept. So even if you accept the idea that what's happened is the slowdown in the population means that we should start to expect 20, 30,000 jobs a month, and that that is now the new normal that we have to get our heads around. If you think, oh, well, Trump will figure this out and he'll realize this is bad and it looks bad for him because it means that everybody's going to, the Democrats are going to have a field day pounding on him because of the slow job growth. Promises Kate, promises met. This is his most popular issue. And he's proud to note that we've got a border patrol agent looking at an empty field because there's nobody coming into the country. So my point of bringing this up is wherever you are on this issue, it isn't going to change. It is not going to change till we get another president. And maybe if, depending on who that next president is, it might not even change then but it's not gonna change for the next couple of years. So this leads me up to this idea, what should be done about it? And I'm gonna give you the unsatisfactory answer, nothing. Because now that we're in a slow population growth, we should expect 30 or 40,000 jobs a month, and that's enough. That's all we need. So if we go to the final chart, um, the final chart shows the probability that the Fed will cut rates in September. Um, the FOMC press conference, I'll start there, was highlighted. You know, the probability of a rate cut was 66% minus for cuts, positive for hikes. So it was minus 66. When Paul was done talking, it got to like minus 40. He was hawkish. He was saying we don't need to cut rates. And most of the data in Powell up until that moment on last Thursday concluded there's going to be no rate cuts. One number comes out to July payrolls, and it goes from 43% to 93% in an hour and a half. And it is still currently at 90% chance that the Fed's going to cut. Now, what my fear is, is that we're going to look at these low payroll numbers. We're not going to accept the idea that we have to reset our thinking and say, 30,000 jobs is fine if we got no population growth, because we're not having babies. And even if we were, we'd have to wait 20 years. And we, uh, we've shut the border down. So if there's no growth in the population, we don't need to create 150,000 jobs. But that's not the way people are thinking about it. They're panicking over this and they're saying the Fed has to cut. The Fed can't open the border. 
all they're going to wind up doing is stimulating the economy, and then that could wind up be creating inflation. The way it could create inflation is there's another statistic, which I didn't include in here, which is called the labor force participation rate. How many people between ages 18 and 64 have a job? It's about 62% of the, well, who are the other 38%? They're students, they're in the military, uh, they're retired early, they're homemakers, they're people with disabilities, there's people that are independently wealthy, they don't wanna work, all of the above. So 38% of that, and that's about normal, about 38% of that. So if you're saying, look, we gotta get back to 150,000 jobs and the Fed can't open the border, and Trump is saying promises made, promises kept, and the border's not going to be reopened, where are we going to get these people to keep 150,000 jobs? We're going to have to tell homemakers, students, people in the military, people with disabilities, what's it going to take for you to take this job? More money, higher wages, wage inflation is what it's going to do. So what I fear is, if we don't diagnose the problem correctly, that it is slow population growth, then we're going to conclude, well, we gotta be cutting rates, we gotta be printing money or whatever vernacular you wanna use. And we're not gonna change the labor market, we're just gonna create more inflation and potentially make it worse. So what changed with that big division downward? I think that when those late arriving surveys came to the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, these, these companies were saying, we're not hiring, where the labor BLS was estimating they were, that's why we had the big revision down. And the reason they're not hiring is those people we weren't gonna hire aren't here or they're hiding. They're not showing up to ask for these jobs. Or, and so therefore they're looking around for people we like. And that's where I think we're going to see more and more of this as we move forward from here. Jim, thank you for your thoughts today, and thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions on Arbor Research or Bianco Research, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks again, and have a great day.